The views and opinions of this program are those of the host guests and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Today's episode of Market Talk is brought to you by Growmark FS. Keeping up with the latest in ag is a challenge, to say the least, but there are experts nearby ready to help. You'll find them at your local FS. You can trust them to bring you customized agronomic, grain, and energy solutions bored of the latest thinking. That's because FS specialists receive continuous training that keeps them current on the latest trends, practices, and technologies. So you'll get local expertise that's both exceptional and up-to-date. Visit FSSystem.com to learn how FS is bringing you what's next. Well, as we continue to take a look at the market trade, again, Friday, of course, a huge rally in the grains. We had a decent day in the livestock on Friday as well. And the markets, of course, closed for the holiday weekend. We'll get back to normal trading on uh, the Monday night session into Tuesday. What do we make of the current state of this market as we work through a pretty important weekend? Well, joining us today to talk about it, we welcome back into Market Talk, Brian Irie with Crossroads Co-op. Brian, it's great to catch up with you again. Thanks for making some time to join us today. Thanks for having me. And yes, it is great to catch up again. I, I appreciate being here. Well, we uh, have an uh, interesting market to talk about, no doubt. Uh, grains, obviously, the big story is the huge weather rally Thursday and Friday in the market. And I, I think about just... You know, some of these uh, contracts, I know in the case of December corn, we busted through the 100-day and the 200-day moving average. Uh, I look at the strength of the product market in soybeans. What an impressive just weather rally overall in the grains, Brian. It, it really is. It, um, it felt like the funds had been uh, locked in a short position that they were really working hard to protect those positions too. And Without anybody around to, to buy the market other than manage money, they were pretty successful about that. But as you mentioned, it seemed like Monday they came in and they did, were determined to uh, to at least get out of the short positions, if not start to establish long positions. And I'm I'm absolutely certain here uh, that they are long at this point, and that has been uh, it's been a big driver this week and. I, you know, you mentioned weather. I think that is a huge, huge component. And obviously the, especially the Eastern Corn Belt's been very, very dry. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked to some folks this week who were in um, Rogers, Arkansas for one of the poultry festivals late last week. And they had talked to a lot of people who had driven through Illinois to get there. And Fortunately, it doesn't sound like the crop is in horrible condition at this point, just because I think the temps have been cool. But uh, corn's going to have to have rain, and soybeans are going to have to rain have rain here sooner or later. Yeah, very true. And that weather pattern, of course, it continues to just push that rain back a few days every so often, it seems like. And many areas really missing out on some of those key rains. And one has to wonder, when will it be too little, too late, so to speak? I think about the closes for the week, Brian. I mean, it's not every day you see November beans a dollar thirty-eight higher on the week, and you see December corn uh, sixty-seven cents higher on the week. I mean, that's to me that makes me think twice about rewarding the rally if I'm in a position to do so, Brian. Absolutely, or if you do reward the rally, do it incrementally. I think that is the key. I mean, I've had a lot of success helping producers market a grain using that uh, strategy because it's it's pretty easy to to just you know, hey, I didn't think I was going to be profitable. I'm profitable here, and and lay off a lot of bushels. I think being strategic about your marketing plan at this point is really really important, and having a plan is really really important as well. Having a plan is really important. And I know, too, not letting emotions get the best of you, you know, looking at a market and seeing it's continuing to rally and thinking, oh, it's going to go higher and higher. And then, as we know, every rally at some point, it runs out and this market is going to fall apart. It's just a matter of, you know, when, not if, it seems like, Brian, that it always, always goes back to that. Yeah, invariably it does. And I think that, um, given the poor demand situation that we have from an export mm -hmm. perspective at this point, that is, that is what's going to happen. And with markets trading nearly around the clock, 
20 hours or so, it makes it um, very difficult that, uh, you know, you get a you get a weather change in the afternoon and the night session can be limit lower before you know it. And, and you end up in that situation that you just described. And, you know, one other quick thing here that has kind of uh flown under the radar today in, in a lot of circles is um, the situation with the five European countries cutting off imports from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. The uh, These countries had a little conflict with uh, Ukraine on bringing cheap grain and it was it's Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, Bulgaria and Romania. They um, Several of those countries met with Ukraine earlier in the week or in the the spring and expressing concerns about cheap grain coming into their countries. And it was creating problems with their domestic producers. And none of those countries wanted to be in a situation where they were paying subsidies or or uh, having to uh, be concerned about uh, Ukrainian grain breaking local prices for the producers. And those countries just flat out said today, we're done. No more, mm -hmm. uh, no more Ukrainian grain. And as tough a situation as that is for Ukraine, it is uh, part of the reason that we rallied here so sharply today. And it's going to be something to keep an eye on. I don't know if this is something that they're going to be able to get resolved. It kind of sounds like it's doubtful at this point. And I think that uh, it's put Ukraine in a situation that the only way to get grain out of their company is through some circuitous rail lines. And it's very mm -hmm. cumbersome to do that. The gauges don't even match up on the rail lines from one country to the other. And, um, uh, their only other option is the Crimean Peninsula if they were able to capture that back, which doesn't sound like it's going to happen anytime soon either. So something yeah. something to keep its, uh, our eye on. I, I would really think today that uh, um, the, the market was 80 percent this story and 20 percent weather where the rest of the week, as you mentioned, it's been 100 percent weather. And now you kind of added a little fuel to the fire here, which makes me think. Uh, what you said earlier is that these markets could have legs. It, it, it could certainly run on us a little farther than what we thought and not a situation where you're going to want to get all your eggs in one basket in terms of marketing grain, just as you suggested. Well, that's a great observation, Brian. Uh, great insight. I want to talk livestock as well with you. The cattle market had a fairly decent day on Friday, even with corn rallying and grains rallying. I know some folks have been asking, though, and some folks have been saying they feel like a top is in on this cattle market finally. So that's my question to you. Do you feel like there's a top in or do you think that this was just a, a correction to move higher once again? What's the latest you're seeing in the cattle trade? I just have to feel today like it's probably the cattle market probably still has a little more upside to it. Just from the perspective, it's um, it's very rare that we hear Feedlots say that uh, packers are are wanting their cattle now, but they the packer just doesn't have enough cattle, at least out in our part of the world, from what we're hearing, to be able to satisfy demand at this at this point. And they're they're asking some of the lots to ship twelve hundred and fifty pound live cattle at this mm -hmm. point, and that's I mean they're obligated on the other side. The packer is. And uh, I think the uh, the feed yard probably has the upper hand here because usually they want to ship a 1500 pound animal to uh, to that packer. So I'm, I'm guessing they're asking for some kind of an incentive to be able to do that. And uh, I, at, at some point, however, it really does feel like you do put in a top, I think, with the condition of the economy at this point you're going to run into a uh, an issue with the average household being able to afford beef. And I think mm -hmm. that there is a demand issue. I hear that, you know, there's a lot of Mexican beef, a lot of Brazilian beef that would like to make its way here and markets fix themselves. And, and I think this one will find a way to fix itself as well in terms of supply. But um, for the moment, it doesn't show any signs of slowing down, at least not much. Well, and I know too, uh, cash has been a big driver here and and we've seen a little bit of a, you know, sideways pattern in cash to an extent, but even then cash still remaining really robust, whether we're talking in the North or in the South, Brian. 
Right. Absolutely. I, I would agree. And we heard uh, comments earlier this week that um, it's it's highly unlikely that you have uh, feedlot capacity over 65 percent here over not just the next year, but even possibly the next couple of years, which is uh, it's a it's a very, very interesting supply issue. And I think you would probably have to go back to 2013, 2014 to find a similar set of circumstances. Well, Brian, great thoughts. Before we let you go today, anything final you want to mention for us or anything you want to reiterate for folks who are listening in? No, I just think as both a producer and an end user here, you really need to be on your toes over the course of the next 30 to 60 days. In, and especially with this weather situation in the, um, in the Eastern Corn Belt, uh, you know, this market does have the ability to run higher. And I think that uh, at one point with a normal crop, we probably would have seen December corn futures at 450 this fall. I think that potential still exists given the demand situation, but it's something that um, I think um, especially the end user needs to, needs to be cognizant of as the market could get away from you a little bit here. And as a producer, I think as you mentioned earlier, it's a it's a fine line. You just have to continue to market, but don't get crazy with what you're doing because prices may be higher tomorrow and in all likelihood they could be lower too. It's just going to be a one of those typical weather markets. Well, great thoughts to consider. We appreciate the time. Brian Irie with Crossroads Co-op. Thanks so much for joining us here today, Brian, and uh, have a great one. We'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you, Jesse.